Anthony Grasso here, bringing you financial news you can use. In this video, I'm going to do a stock analysis and recommendation on Atlantica Sustainable. I'm going to go over a summary of the company, its product offerings, recent headline news, financials, analyst projections, and give it my buy, hold, or sell recommendation. And as always, don't forget to smash that like button down below, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you like to hear daily stock recommendations. So let's get right into it. So Atlantica Sustainable Infrastructure acquires, owns, and manages renewable energy, natural gas, transmission, and transportation infrastructures, and water assets in the United States, Canada, Mexico, Peru, Chile, Uruguay, Spain, Algeria, and South Africa. It owns 25 assets comprising of 1,496 megawatts of aggregate renewable energy installed generation capacity, 343 megawatts of natural gas-fired power generation capacity, uh, 300 and, uh, 1166 miles of electric transmission lines and 10.5 million cubic feet per day of water desalination assets. Atlantica Sustainable Infrastructure was founded back in 2013 and is based in Brentford, United Kingdom. So let's go ahead and look at some, some of the news that's going out there right now. A possible big infrastructure spending bill might finally get passed this year. With a slim majority the Democrats have in the Senate, infrastructure spending is probably going to be one of the less controversial measures and could be actually be implemented this year. About a $1.5 trillion to $2 trillion package somewhere in that zone could get through. Of course, Biden and other political leaders are likely to prioritize more stimulus for consumers and businesses struggling due to the COVID-19 pandemic before tackling any new infrastructure uh, initiatives. So let's go ahead and look at the, some, some of the fundamentals. So the company has a market capitalization of $5.1 billion with a current trading price of $46.19 a share. The company's revenues have been hanging around the $1 billion mark over the past few years, but their earnings are forecasted to grow 21.87% per year. The current forecasted earnings for 2021 have revenues at $1.03 billion with an earnings of $122 million. The forecasted earnings increase over the next few years have the projected revenues to be about $1.3 billion in 2023 with earnings at $120 million. Now, Atlantica's earnings trend is positive, being profitable over the past five years, growing uh, earnings by, by about 55.8% per year. Let's bring it back here. Now, looking at the debt level, uh, the company's debt to equity ratio is about 401.1%. Uh, it's considered high. Uh, the debt to equity ratio has increased from about 320% to 400% over the past five years. Now, the company's debt is not well covered by operating cash flow of 5.3%, uh, and the interest payments on its debt are not well covered by EBIT, 1.2 times coverage. But I do not feel we should worry too much about the financial position of the debt at the moment with extremely positive future growth potential. I just would like to see the company strengthen its balance sheet just a tad bit in the future years. I do not feel that the analyst projections are taking in consideration the Joe Biden's massive infrastructure plan that the company is poised to take advantage of. It is important to note that the company has a stable share price. Uh, it, it's not significantly more volatile than the rest of U.S. stocks over the past three months, typically moving around plus or minus 6% a week. It also, the stock also moves in line with the overall market. So if the market increases, typically this company has been increased, and when it, and when it decreases, it decreases. Now, the uh, company has exceeded the U.S. renewable energy industry, which returned 42.5% over the past year. We should also be aware that shareholders have been diluted in the past year, though, with the total shares outstanding uh, growing by 8.9%. So what exactly do the analysts say on this? The current analyst rating consensus is an overall buy, with 60% saying a buy, 40% saying a hold. The analyst price targets have, have about $51 a share at the high end, $36 a share at the low end and $44 a share on average. So it's, it's trading slightly above the average projected sales price. Now going over a few analyst reports, the CFRA report has the company as a buy with based on its score from CFRA's quantitative model for the United States. Growth includes factors such as the EPS growth, the stability and cash flow growth and, um, and stability. Now the Ford Equity Research has a hold recommendation on as a result of their systematic analysis on three basic characteristics, earning strength, relative valuation, and recent stock price movements. Now, the company has produced a positive trend in earnings per share over the past five quarters. And while recent estimates of the company have been raised by analysts, 
the company has posted better than expected results. Based on operating earnings yield, the company is about fairly valued when compared to all the other companies that they cover. Share price changes over the past year indicates that the company will perform in line with the market over the near term, like I just said. That is something I want all of us to remember, and I will repeat that. Share prices changes over the past year for this company indicates that it will perform in line with the market over the near term. I agree with that and we'll discuss my outlook for what the green market near near term will mean for this company. Now the street, uh, the street ratings and the RT research team also have the company as a hold. Now let's go and uh, examine some of the evaluation analysis of what the current projected analysts are saying right now. Now examining the valuation analysis, because the company is in the, is in the independent power and renewable electricity producers industry and has positive earnings, the PE and book price to book ratios are the most appropriate valuation measures. The price to sales ratio is less in, instructive than the PE since the company has positive earnings. Therefore, the company seems highly valued with a PE of value of 77.59 times, one of the highest in the independent power and renewable electricity producers industry. Now, when looking at the valuation analysis, be aware of the macro political framework that might bring this company significantly more revenue over the next few years. Now, looking at the profitability analysis, based on its gross margin, operating margin, and net margin, the company converts a large percentage of its uh, revenues to profits than most all the other companies in the independent power and renewable electricity producers industry. Furthermore, the company is profitable with an operating margin of about 39.89%, which is really good. Now, looking at the dividend analysis, now the dividend is not sustainable that the company offers right now. Over the past 12 months, the company paid more in dividends than it earned. Over time, this cannot continue. So investors buying into this company right now for the dividend payout, we might see a decline in stock price if they cut out the dividend payments in the future. That's something to look out for. Now, looking at the growth uh, rates analysis, recently the earnings trend of the company has been positive. Over the past 12 months, the company has reversed the, period, uh, the prior period's loss to show a profit of 60 cents per share. This performance was to be expected though, as the typical company in the independent power and renewable electricity producers also posted better results. Now looking at the financial strength analysis of the debt. Now the debt to, the debt to total capital ratio at 79.17% is in line with the independent power renewable electricity producers industry's norm, despite its increase over the last year. With an interest coverage of ratio of about 1.56 times and a quick ratio of 1.78 times, the company should be able to comfortably repay its debt and I agree with that. Now, the ownership breakdown of the company, individual insiders own 0.1% of the company, institutions own 39%, general public, me and you own 16.7%, public companies own 44.2%. Insiders have purchased more shares in the past three months with no insider selling. So am I a buy, hold, or sell recommendation on Atlantica Sustainable? Now, here are my thoughts. If you believe the analyst, the company only has moderate growth potential and is slightly overvalued. Now, I do agree with a slightly overvalued position, but I, I do not agree that it's a moderate growth uh, of potential. I have to say that there has been rising earnings estimates for this company, and that implies an improvement in the company's underlying business. Typically, investors should show their appreciation for this improving business trend by pushing the stock higher, and it has gone higher in the past couple weeks. As I discussed earlier, share price changes over the past year indicates that it will perform in line with the market overall in the near term. I think that stocks in the green energy sector, specifically Atlantica Sustainable, will potentially increase drastically in the short term. I want to emphasize something though, though that this company might only see moderate growth and is slightly overvalued at this exact moment in time, but that is not taking consideration Joe Biden's infrastructure plan that might drastically increase this company's revenues from the current analyst projections, which would make the valuation a lot higher. Be aware the company currently pays out a high dividend rate of 3.64% in the short term, and that is not sustainable unless the company increases its revenues in the near term or increases its overall earnings. This might have a negative impact on the stock if the company ever announces that they are stopping the dividend payouts. Also be aware if Biden is not able to pass an infrastructure spending bill this year, then there would be a significant downside risk to the stock. 
That all being said, taking into account the human psychological aspect of investors trying to cash in on green energy stocks, I am a short-term bull uh, with a uh, in the near term targeting a buy-in price around $44 to $45 a share, looking to get it to about $51 a share by the end of the year. Beyond the $44 to $45 a share price, I would not enter this stock. The stock has been slightly volatile and might come back down to the $44 a share price. I am also a long-term bull on Atlantica over the next few years. Short-term investors might be able to cash in before the stock gets the massive Joe Biden inf infrastructure uh, fist bump. But be warned, the Joe Biden administration infrastructure plan is not a done deal. And if it doesn't go through, there might be significant downside risk to my bullish bet. So I am a significant bullish bet right now based upon a hope that the infrastructure plan will actually happen. But I want to know your thoughts on this. I haven't seen any uh, major drastic increase in the share price over the past few weeks like the other stocks I've analyzed and, and check out those videos. Do you think it's a poise to have a breakout in the share price? Please leave your comments down below. So there you have it, folks. And as always, don't forget to smash that like button down below and consider subscribing and hit that notification bell if you would like to hear daily stock recommendations. Until the next stock update later today or tomorrow morning, ciao.